Autodesk Vault, how Vault file replication works. My name is Richard Rankin and I work for Autodesk in the technical support department and I specialize in data management. Before watching this presentation I would recommend that you watch the Vault data flow screencast presentation posted some months ago. There is a link here um, in the presentation but if you can't if the link is not working um, then you can just put into Google um, the search terms Vault data flow and that should return the presentation. It's not necessary for this presentation but you may find it useful background information. Um, so as far as the agenda is concerned um, I'm going to talk about the different types of file replication, uh, file replication with a single server, I'm going to talk about replication priority, compressing files, file replication with multiple SQL servers. But before we begin uh, the presentation let's just uh, talk about some of the terminology that I'm going to be using. So a vault server is a computer running ADMS or AVFS. Multi-site is multiple vault servers connected to each other. A site is a vault server within a multi-site environment. It's maybe uh, worth explaining as well that ADMS stands for Autodesk Data Management Server. AVFS stands for Autodesk Vault File Server and both of those technologies um, will not work without internet information services. Icons used during this presentation. These are the most common symbols I'll be using during this presentation. The one on the left is a file server, the one on the right is a SQL database server. The difference between SQL replication and file replication. SQL replication is a complex Microsoft technology that's simplified by ADMS with a feature called connected workgroups. In summary, SQL replication is the communication that happens between SQL servers. File store replication um, is file store synchronization between file servers. If you were to use the term replication on its own without actually also including SQL or file store, it can be quite ambiguous. So um, I'm going to try to avoid using that terminology during this presentation. So in this example um, I'm going to use today, there are four Vault servers. Two are Autodesk Data Management Servers, ADMS, two are Autodesk Vault File Servers, AVFS. The AVFS on the left connects to the ADMS on the left and the AVFS on the right connects to the ADMS on the right. For simplicity's sake um, we'll call them uh, UK, France, China and New Zealand. If they can communicate with each other over the LAN, they will. They'll use the HTTP protocol for all file replication communication. The Autodesk Data Management Job Dispatch Service must be running on each server for file replication to work. But what happens when a, a user checks in a file? How does that get to the other servers? Let's see. So here's a user. He checks a file into AVFSB. Using the HTTP protocol, that file is sent over the LAN as a SOAP packet to the AVFS file server. The file is now located in the file store of AVFS uh, in China. A message is then sent to its ADMS using HTTP uh, telling it that the file is now vaulted on the China AVFS. 
the ADMS then sends a message over TCP IP to the SQL Server telling it that the file has been vaulted and is located on the China AVFS. But how does a user logging into the French AVFS get that file? There are three mechanisms. The first one is on-demand replication from the user. The second one is on-demand replication from the server. And lastly, we have scheduled replication. So on-demand replication from the user. By default, replication is scheduled to occur between servers every weekday at 12 a.m. local time. This means a user might need to wait a day for a file to get from one server to another. If the user needs to use it sooner, they would need to request that the file is replicated manually. They would do this by logging into the vault from the client or one of the application integrations and opening the file or getting the file. They will be presented with a message asking them if they want to get the file from another server. The granularity here is defined by the number of files the user is opening or getting. So on-demand replication from the server. In the ADMS console, the concept is the same, but the granularity can be for just one vault database or the entire site, so all of the databases on that site. The files replicated will depend on which folders are configured to be replicated in replicated folders. By default, all folders are selected. It's worth noting, if all folders are selected, all files will be replicated. Unticking a folder will not unreplicate files already replicated. Unticking a folder will not force the vacuum cleaner to start unreplicating files. The problem with on-demand replication is that it only happens when the user or administrator asks for it. If the network is slow or the number of files or size of files is great, the operation could take a long time. This is not always desirable. Scheduled replication will replicate the file according to the schedule defined in the ADMS console and the folders selected. The option is found in the ADMS console file stores node. By default, the option is daily or the frequency can be set for every hour or every minute or not at all. So assuming that the file has not yet been replicated by either method yet the user can see that the file is in the vault but they may or may not have the file replicated property exposed and most likely are completely unaware of its current location. All they can do is see the file. So the user tries to get the file from the vault server that they are logged into, which in this case is the UK ADMS. When they request the file from their vault server, the ADMS sends a request to the SQL database asking, where is the file? when they request the file from their vault server using TCP IP, not HTTP, the ADMS then sends a request to the SQL database asking where is the file. The answer from the SQL server is, well, you don't have it, but you can find it on the China AVFS. the user is presented with a message in the vault client saying that the file has not been replicated to your local server yet would you like to replicate it so assuming that they still want the file they say yes yes to all 
So the UK ADMS sends a message directly to the China AVFS using HTTP for the file. The file is then sent as a SOAP packet over the LAN using HTTP to the UK ADMS. Once copied, the UK ADMS then sends a message to the SQL server telling it that it has the file. The database then knows that the file is in two locations now, should another server need it. The file is then sent to the user. Now imagine a slightly different scenario. Imagine that the file has been replicated to all servers except one. This could have happened because the file was replicated because a user demanded it, um, an administrator uh, replicated the vault or site or because it was replicated by schedule. In both scenarios, the process for getting the file is exactly the same, but if the file is on multiple servers, which server will ADMS get the file from? The answer is, ordinarily, it's completely random. It doesn't matter if one server is on the other side of the planet. Uh, when the user asks to get the file, Although the UK is located geographically adjacent to France, there is just as much chance the file will come from New Zealand. Vault does not run a latency speed check before trying to get the file. It has no preference. Or does it? Replication priority allows the administrator to choose which servers are prioritized over others. The feature is accessed in the ADMS console by right clicking on the file server and choosing manage replication priority. When you click it you will be presented for the first time um, this dialog box and all of the servers will be not prioritized and over on the left hand side. So if you want the ADMS um, UK server to first look for the files in the French server, um, we would select it and move it to the prioritized list for that server. So now if the file needed exists on all three servers, the UK will look to the French server first. If the file doesn't exist on the French server either, it will be random which other server it will look for. It could be New Zealand or China. In this scenario, if the file needed exists on all three servers, the UK server will look to the French server first. If the French server is offline for any reason, it could be network issues uh, or it's being restarted or for some other reason, um, it will then try the China server, so it will do it in the order that they're listed. If the China server is offline, it will then look to see what other servers might be available and pick one at random. In this environment, it can only be New Zealand, but in a real environment, the number of unprioritized servers could be from one, oh, sorry, from zero to more than zero. Um, at the time of writing, the highest number of file servers Autodesk is aware of um, that one customer is using is, is approaching about 100. Compressing files. Um, it is possible to automatically compress or zip the files being sent. Uh, this can be configured to occur um, between site to site or client to server. The advantage of this is that it can speed up the time it takes to replicate files between servers and client. The disadvantage of this is that it consumes memory and CPU on the servers and clients to compress and decompress the files. So use with care. Um, there is a, an Autodesk Knowledge um, Network article um, that exists and it details how you can turn file compression on and off. 
So how file replication works with SQL replication? How does it work with uh, connected workgroups? Let's change the environment a bit. Let's add a, another SQL server and one workgroup, we'll call it Europe and we'll call the other one APAC short for Asia Pacific. So let's assume that the European or the Europe workgroup fault servers connect to the Europe SQL server which is also the publisher uh, whilst the APAC workgroup fault servers connect to the APAC SQL server which is a subscriber. A user in China checks a file into their local AVFS server. Once the file is located on the China AVFS, the database on the subscriber changes to reflect that the file is physically now located on that server. So using SQL merge replication, the fact that the file has been added to the vault including all the other information that's been indexed when it was checked in is synchronized to the publisher. So now the European user logged into the UK ADMS can see that the file in the vault. If they try and get a copy of that file, what happens now? Exactly the same as before. They send a request to their vault server asking for the file. ADMS A or the, the UK ADMS asks the SQL publisher where is the file? SQL tells the UK ADMS that the file is on the China server. So ADMS in the UK then sends a HTTP request to the China AVFS for the file. The China AVFS then sends the file in a SOAP packet over HTTP to the UK's ADMS. The UK's ADMS then sends a message to its SQL publisher that it now has the file and at the same time delivers it to the user. Lastly, using SQL merge replication, the SQL publisher now has new information that needs to be sent to the subscriber. The information is that not only does the file reside on AVFS, on the China AVFS, but it also resides on the UK ADMS. So now both SQL servers have a full record of all the servers where the file is currently located. In other words, all SQL servers are synchronized. So in summary, um, what we talked about is the different types of file replication. We talked about the um, uh, on-demand from the, from the client, on-demand from the server and also um, the scheduled replication. Uh, we looked at how file replication with a single SQL server works. We talked about replication priority. We also touched on compressing files. Um, we also talked about file replication with multiple SQL servers, so in a connected work group um, and also a SQL server replication uh, environment. So that pretty much brings me towards the end of um, this presentation, um, but there was one question that cropped up a few times as I was going through this with some of my colleagues and um, the question is so um, which um, do I personally recommend or prefer um, file server replication or SQL server replication? Uh, in my experience um, 
I would always start off with a uh, a file store replicated environment. I would explore um, the limitations of file replication before I would begin to use SQL replication. The reason is is that SQL replication has got a very large administrative overhead. It can introduce um, some other problems. Um, there could be other problems with uh, licensing, for example, with regards to SQL. Um, and it requires a higher skill level and, and, and expertise to uh, maintain and resolve um, any particular issues that may crop up um, as opposed to file replication. So as you're going through the process of scaling up, uh, I would always recommend that you, as I mentioned before, explore the, um, the limitations of file replication before you move on to a, a fully SQL replicated environment. So um, that brings me to the end of this presentation. I hope that you have found it useful and I thank you for your attention.